Hello, lovely people, kombucha lovers. Welcome to part two of DIY kombucha. So last week we uh, made kombucha from starter liquid and did our primary fermentation. So this week we're focusing on the secondary fermentation. The secondary fermentation of kombucha is when you um, want to add the flavor and the fizz. Okay, so a few geeky facts about kombucha is that the primary fermentation is aerobic. So the reason why you have uh, a lid on here is because you, you don't have a lid on here that you have fabric on here is so that the kombucha can breathe and this is because the pr the first primary fermentation needs air hello if you're joining i'd love to see who's here and if you uh, made kombucha last week and you're ready for a secondary if you have any questions let me know so the first the primary fermentation is aerobic it needs air in order to create the probiotics okay the secondary fermentation is anaerobic. Okay, so you need a jar or a bottle with a lid that fits really secure, that's gonna be airtight. And the, the, the more sure you are that your lid is airtight, the more you're gonna guarantee that your kombucha is gonna be fizzy. Uh, there are some tricks you can do if you don't have a, quite an airtight seal uh, to make the seal uh, more airtight. So if you wanna know that, I can, I can let you know how to do that. Okay, so to make our secondary fermentation, like I said, we're gonna flavor it and we're gonna make it fizzy. So how do you flavor kombucha? I'd love to hear uh, who in this group has made kombucha, what flavors have you tried? I have a kombucha company that's called Golden Sun Kombucha. We deliver all around Israel, so if you'd like to um, get some kombucha, and try ours. We also sell starter kits. So if you really want to make your own and you don't have uh, how to do it or you want to support small businesses, you can order from us uh, and I'll put the order form in the link. So I've tried so many different flavors of kombucha. I basically feel like I've tried everything. Um, I even tried grass. So <laughs> just to see if it would work. And it does, in fact, work. So it doesn't taste good. But if you put grass in your kombucha, your kombucha will taste like grass. Okay? So you can really play around and be creative and experiment with all different kinds of flavors that you love in your life. Okay? So the flavors that haven't worked for me, which this is always funny to think about, like what doesn't work? Watermelon didn't work for me. Coconut, no good. Um orange or grapefruit for some reason also doesn't work at all for me i've seen some companies in the u.s that have done successful like orange kombucha but i feel like maybe they use um you know artificial flavoring rather than the actual fruit and so what we're all about here is staying connected to mama earth using all natural ingredients um, and really everything you need is right at your fingertips so I didn't even need to go shopping in order to realize what two flavors I want to make. So I have these two bottles that I'm going to um, use the kombucha that we brewed together last week and um, make a new round of kombucha. So first of all, as always, I'm going to sanitize my hands and sanitize the bottles. So this is really important. So obviously you want to wash them with soap to make sure that there's no gunk or goo inside. But then after you wash with soap, as I mentioned last week, you want to rinse it out with strong starter liquid or apple cider vinegar. So apple cider vinegar is like kombucha's best friend. If you're making kombucha, make sure you have a lot of this in stock and uh, you want it to be raw and unpasteurized as much as possible so that you can see kind of the chunkies floating around in it. So first of all, I'm going to sanitize my hands with the apple cider vinegar, yummy. Don't worry, the smell goes away really quickly. And I'm also gonna sanitize my bottles. So I just take the apple cider vinegar, put a tiny bit in, put my sanitized hand on top, swish, 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 and dump it into the second one. 
so we don't waste. Swish, 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 swish. Okay. So okay. now you've covered the bottles in its own little family of probiotics, and you're ready to go. So I wanted to show you guys from last week what happened here so that um, basically a little SCOBY was created, a film that is on the top of uh, this, this SCOBY. So that's a good sign. That means my kombucha is working. Um, it's not as thick as I would like it to be. So maybe in an ideal world, I would wait another week before I do this, but I want to taste it. That's what I'm most interested in. This one has a film as well, but it's actually stuck to the first SCOBY, so I'm not going to pull it out. Whew, and it smells. It's, it's intense. So let's go ahead and taste it. Let's taste it. Over swan. Oh, and by the way, the fabric that you use for on top of the uh, SCOBY, make sure it's breathable. Okay, that's really the only requirement is that you can put it up to your mouth and you can breathe. If you can breathe, the, the kombucha can breathe and everybody's happy. So tasting this kombucha, just put a little bit into my cup. Swish, swish, swish. Okay, so yeah, this kombucha is still quite sweet. So if so, it's too sweet for me. So um, I would leave it for another week, okay? But for the sake of this video, we're not gonna leave it for another week and we're gonna make ourselves some sweeter kombucha. So the first flavor I'm gonna make is Zuta and peach. I've never tried this before, this specific combination, although I love kombucha with Zuta and I love kombucha with peach. So let's see how they work. So you pick your herbs, and I just picked like this much, yeah? And just, I rinsed it off and just chuck it in there. And also washing your fruit with water before you put it in your kombucha is important. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the peach. You can use fresh squeezed juice. Uh, you can use store-bought juice. And you can just use chunks of fruit. And that's like the easiest, most foolproof way to do this. So I'm just going to take a chunk of peach. Obviously, the smaller you cut them up, the more surface area it'll have, the more the kombucha can absorb the flavors of, of your fruit. Um, so let's cut it up a little bit smaller. Just make two slices here. That's fine. Let's go one, two. Let's put half a peach in there. So I think this is a, that this is a one liter bottle. So I think half a peach is pretty good for one liter. Okay, so this is my peach Zuta kombucha. I also highly recommend labeling your bottles. Put the date, put the um, flavor that you've used, uh, maybe write even the batch number of kombucha on it. Uh, I should have done that with these as well. Okay, so I have my flavor in there. Now I always want to keep a third of, st of liquid in here. So I only want to dump out two thirds of the liquid. Okay, so I'm, funnels are your friend here, but I don't have one, so let's go ahead and make a mess. This is actually my kitchen, by the way. The other kitchen was my, oh, the SCOBY got in there, so I'm gonna rescue it. I'm gonna get that SCOBY back, because that SCOBY wants to be with the mother liquid. Hey, SCOBY! Come back, I see you. So when your kombucha is um, really, you know, all natural and you make it yourself, even in the second fermentation, you should get a SCOBY growing. It'll grow a lot slower because again, it's an anaerobic process. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my second jar of kombucha to finish off this bottle. Now there's something called airspace that you want to maintain in your kombucha. So you see, I always leave a third of the liquid in the bottom so that I can get my process going again. You can even tell from the color that this kombucha is stronger than this kombucha because the um, bacteria and yeast has eaten the color out of the tea. And this one, it still didn't fully eat the color out of the tea. but Actually, you know, it, 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 you can see that it's working because it's a lot lighter than actual tea, which this is a fresh batch of kombucha. So that's good. All right. So there's something here called airspace, which you want to keep. 
So this is a little bit too much airspace. I would add a little bit more kombucha if I had more, but I don't have any more right now. So I'm going to leave it like this, but it's okay. Like you can have a little bit of airspace, but you just don't want to fill the kombucha all the way to the top. And you also don't want to have too much airspace. Like to here, you won't get fizzy kombucha either. Okay, so then I'm going to take my lid, put it on really, really tight. And then I'm going to put this in a warm, dark place for about a week. Don't touch it for a week, okay? Let it, um, let it do its thing. Don't open it. Don't burp it. Maybe five days if you're getting really curious. And if you start to open it, uh, you should hear like a pop sound. If you're brand new to kombucha, one uh, fun tip that I have is to actually do one bottle in a plastic bottle. And then you can really see when the kombucha got fizzy because the bottle will expand. When it's in a glass bottle, which you should always use glass, always, always use glass. Don't use uh, metal, don't use plastic, use glass, glass, glass. But to do like an experiment bottle or like um, a tester bottle or whatever you would call that, you could do it in a plastic bottle. And then once you see that the plastic bottle is like about to explode because it's so stretched open, then you know that your kombucha is fizzy. Okay, so it's a really good little like marker. I'd love to hear if you guys have any questions. Is anybody writing in here? Uh, the future is female, yes. Okay guys, so I hope that you enjoyed this and I don't know how much time has gone by, honestly. Oh, so I so this is only one flavor. I did peach and zuta. So the other flavor that I wanted to do is something with ginger, although I don't have any more kombucha, so I won't be using this bottle. But just so you know, if you want to flavor it with ginger, which I highly recommend doing because ginger is an incredible kombucha pairing fruit or whatever, root. So you're just going to like cut off the nasty bits of the ginger. You can peel it as well. Peel your ginger, cut off the skin, cut off the brown bits and get that nice white, like off-white uh, inner meaty parts and then slice it up into a few slices just like this and it's so cute these came out like hearts <laughs> um and just stick those in your bottle stick the uh the ginger in there and i was gonna do ginger strawberry and i have some frozen strawberries from the springtime so you can literally just stick a frozen strawberry in there and uh Strawberry is also super, super good to use in making kombucha because the kombucha really absorbs the flavor of the strawberry so well and you can really like taste it's a strawberry. So I really recommend you try a bunch of different stuff. Make lots of kombucha. The beautiful thing about it is that the more you brew, the more kombucha you have. So it keeps on multiplying. So you can really play with it. You can really have fun in your kitchen. And it's something that's like ongoing. It's like a little baby that you watch it grow and it's really fun and it's just there with you all the time. And the beautiful thing also about kombucha is that it's not finicky. So if you leave it for a few weeks or a few months, it's it, nothing's really going to happen to it. It's going to be okay as long as it's not too humid and as long as it doesn't get contaminated in some way. Um, kombucha can get tam can, can contaminated by fruit flies. They can lay their eggs in there and then you can get worms inside, which I have had happen to me one time and it's disgusting. So just really make sure that you're, um, you have no holes in the, the seal, like the lid. And so that way the fruit flies can't get in. Um, also another problem that can happen with kombucha is that you have mold. Uh, mold is really obvious. It's like you are going to know that it's moldy if it's moldy. Okay, so trust your instincts. If you're confused and you're not sure how your kombucha is doing, send me pictures. Um, but basically, it's like the easiest and most fun thing to do. It's just a matter of um, doing a little bit of creativity, staying on top of it with the days, not letting, like, really tasting your kombucha a lot so that you know what flavor you like, uh, how sweet you like it, how sour you like it, and feel your body as you're drinking it, you know, feel how your body reacts. Um, kombucha is not for everybody. Some people get um, flare-ups in their skin from kombucha. It's really rare, but it does happen. Uh, some women get extra, if you're extra, extra sensitive to yeast infections, it might not be a good thing for you to drink, but it also might help. So it's really different for everybody, and um, I really encourage you to listen to your body, feel into it, 
but 95% of us can really benefit from this beautiful, fun, summery, cold, healthy beverage. So I hope you enjoyed this and seriously, ladies, let me know if you have any questions. Um, I'm going to put the order form in the bottom. So if you want to order a SCOBY kit or you want to order some bottles of kombucha in Israel, you can. And if you're living in the U.S. or you're living in Australia, lucky you because your grocery stores are full of kombucha on the shelves and hopefully Israel will be the same one day. My motto is kombucha in every alonit and every shufer sal. So let's make it happen. <laughs> Bye, ladies. Bye.